All praises to Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Makar Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. I was thinking about this scripture yesterday and then now I've decided to do a lesson on it today. And it's the scripture that goes into how Yahweh Shai was ultimately betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, right? And 30 pieces of silver to betray the Messiah that has died for the whole nation's sins is nothing, right? So if we consider that Yahweh Shai is betrayed for so little, considering how great his life was, and let me read the scriptures first, right? Matthew chapter 26 and verse 14, then one of the 12 called Judas Iscariot, which Judas is another way for, is the, like the Greek way of saying the word Judah. Judah Iscariot went into the chief priest, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, what will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they, can, and they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, they saw opportunity to betray him. So 30 pieces of silver, man, when, let's just look at what it says in the scriptures about Yahweh Shai's life. John chapter 21 and verse 25. And there were also many other things which Yahweh Shai did, the which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So if you consider that Yahweh Shai did so much, so great things on the earth, yet when he was betrayed, they thought, okay, what's a good deal for this? 30 pieces of silver, right? What do you think that's going to be with what people that are going to betray us in the time to come, right? If we have the elect, what do you think people are going to be prepared to get given to betray us, man? A hot meal, a hot cup of coffee, an apple, a cluster of grapes, a Snickers bar, a Twix, you know what I mean? A McDonald's Big Mac chicken, a, a McDonald's Big Mac or a McChicken sandwich. You know what I mean? A Dixie chicken, a Morley's, you know what I mean? A Nando's, like what do you think they're going to be prepared to get given? A Starbucks iced coffee? What do you think people are going to be prepared? Some fried chicken and some like what? Some chicken and waffles. What do you think they're going to be prepared to be given to betray people that believe in you? How shy? Right, what would they be prepared to be given, man? They'll, it will be cheap what they'll be prepared to give, right? It will be nothing, man. And that's something for us to consider that Yahweh Shai was betrayed for so, for so little. So when people are betraying us, if we have the elect, right, they're not going to think of it as a big deal. Because Yahweh Shai was betrayed for much less, for, for nothing too. Right? So we're even, our lives are even worth less than Yahweh Shai's. So we're going to be prepared, be betrayed for less than that. Luke chapter 21 and verse 16. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends. And some of you shall a cause be put to death, and you shall be hated of all men for our name's sake. And so that in, that includes every single person that we could know in those people that I mentioned there. Parents, right? Your brethren, as in like your um your siblings, right? Kinsfolk, right? And friends, man. That's everyone. Your woman is included in that, right? Your woman that that like you think are. Oh, She's rocking with me that well. It's easy. It's easy for a woman to be rocking with you when she needs you. She needs you for her life to be sustained for some for some degree, right? For whatever reason that she thinks that she needs you around, or for whatever need, reason she does need you around, right? It's easy for a woman to be on side then, but when things start going bad, everyone knows, man, how women, how fickle women are. Everyone knows this, right? And that's going to be the main one in a lot of situations. That's going to betray. A lot of brothers because that's the one that's closest, right? That's the one that's closest to brothers, right? That's the one that in most cases sleeps right like a brother will sleep next to their woman, you know? Unless they don't sometimes. But for the most part in most relationships how it goes, that's how it is. So that'll be the person that would be closest to betray. Right? That'll be the person that's got the closest access to easily betray a brother, man. Right, it's gonna it's gonna go bad down here. Let me get this. Luke chapter twelve and verse fifty one, I believe it is, or verse fifty. Luke chapter twelve and verse fifty one. 
Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. From henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. Right? The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and there's going to be even more divisions than that too, man. There's going to be even more divisions. There's going to be the husband against the wife and the wife against the husband. There's going to be more but than that. The son against the, the son. Well, it says the son against the father. Right? It's going to go, it's going to go mad. And there's going to be people that are within, within your family that are going to want to try and get back in contact with you. But it's not, and they're going to be pretending. Right? And this is me putting this out there because it's going to happen to somebody. Right? Whether it be me, you, whoever it's going to happen to, it's going to happen to someone. That people of our fam of our so-called family are going to want to get back in contact with us in relation to trying to know the scriptures. But it's going to be fake though. It's going to be because really they're trying to betray. Because they now believe that this world would be better off if everyone had MOTBs and if they just believed in the in the digital age rather than what the scriptures are talking about because they might feel like they've made it to some degree or like they okay if they only earn average salary now but there's hope for more in the future whatever reason they're gonna have to betray they're gonna do it because your have is betrayed for 30 pieces of silver man so what are we gonna be betrayed for you know a lesser metal than that we we might want won't even be considered worth silver to some of these people. They're like they some of them are gonna want would happily do it for free. You understand that some of these people are gonna be prepared to happily betray us for free, just to see the look on our face, man. Like oh, it was you. And some people don't believe that this would happen, but Yahweh Shai said, for for from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two. And two against three. People are divided right now already in their houses. But when all hell breaks loose, the divisions are going to be shown. The lockdown already already started started to make divisions because there was people that took those things, and people that did not take them. There's people that was zombies for it, and there's people that was rebellious against it and didn't take it. So it's gonna, it's going to happen, man. The betrayal is going to happen, and I just thought I'd put that out there that you have a shy is betrayed for thirty pieces of silver. So what do you think they're gonna get value your life as? We ain't even saying we're the king of the Jews. We're just talking about the king of the Jews. We're talking about the Messiah, right? And the scriptures say this. Where is that one? Um, John fifteen. John fifteen and verse. 19 if you were of the world the world would love his own but because you are not of the world but because excuse me but because you are not of the world but i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hate of you so this world hates us anyway these people don't like us when we're walking down the street yeah and these people for some reason that don't even know us from nowhere they just don't like you right their reason for that is spiritual they just don't like you for no reason. You ain't did nothing to them. You're just minding your business. Literally, you ain't doing nothing to them. They don't like you for some reason, man. They just look at you like, oh, man, if, I, if only I had a, if I had the chance, I'd. And then some of them, when, they, they, when you catch them looking at you, and you brothers know what I'm talking about out there. When you catch them looking at you, do that fake smile, or they start blinking off. You might catch them looking at you, and they like blink we re all weird and like have to get reprogrammed and like you know what I mean? Your countenance was stronger than their countenance when you see them. But 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 when they was walking up to you, they was walking up to you with hatred in their heart. And then when you caught them looking, they do some weird fizzing up themselves, looking up like this, like that your look that you looked at them sent shivers down their damn spine, man. I can recall one time when I've experienced that thing that I mentioned before, one time, maybe like going a couple of years ago now, a good amount of years ago now, back, 
And I was like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? And then afterwards, I heard other brothers talk about an experience that they experienced where something similar happened to them that will happen, that was going on, that happened be way before the situation that happened with me. And I was like, okay, well, then that means that obviously I'm in good company then. If that's something that other brothers have said that they've experienced, man. Just like how we're in good company if the world hates us, because the world hates you, how we try. So if the world loves us, then that's a problem. If you all just got a loads, if you're just a community love, acute, loved by the community in this world, when people see you, you're like running, you're walking through the street and it's like Rocky Balboa is walking through there. You got the whole crowd jogging with you. You got the whole crowd walking with you. They're giving you free apples, free grapes. You know what I mean? You go into the store, you try and buy, and they just love you for all, everyone, everyone just loves you. That's a problem. Whereas if you're despised by the world, that's, and without you actually doing things worthy of being despised, right, then that's actually, you know, that's actually a good thing, man. Because in this world, Esau is loved by the world, even though he's worthy of being despised. He's, he's starting to change somewhat, but for the most part still, the average Edomite gets the benefit of the doubt as though they're a good person. Whereas the average Israelite gets the benefit, oh, what's he up to? What's he up to? When you go into the store, the security guard all of a sudden remembers he's at work and now he wants to follow you around or they start looking down at the CCTV screen that they got there, watching you on there, thinking oh, that you don't know, that they're just watching you on there all of a sudden. You know what I mean? You come into the store, they're just moseying on, watching you all of a sudden before that you came in there. It was on cruise control, right? But then when a when a woman that's probably stole a bottle of wine walks out and the thing beeps, they'll be like, it's all right, darling. Don't, it happens sometimes. You got a receipt and she'll show them a receipt, bold and proud as hell, knowing that I, I didn't scan this thing I'm robbing on the receipt. So you ain't going to have that. And they'll be like, yeah, it's all right, go through. But if our thing scans off, now they want to try and search every single item, that, <laughs> every, every single item that we bought depending on how much they want to take the piss. Now, I mean, these are things that happen to brothers. Even even the apostles that are more in age than us now, they all experience it as if old men are just going around, older men, older men are just going around stealing things, right? As if older men are just known for being for being um, pickpockets and like thieves and that. But they'll still try and act like our apostles will be doing that kind of thing as well, man. It's disgusting. But when an old devil goes into the store, they ain't getting treated like that, though. But they just assume that Jake's a criminal in this world, man. It's sickening. Especially when we know the truth that Esau's the thief. John chapter 15 and verse 23. He that hateth the father, excuse me, he that hateth me, hateth my father also. So these this same world that hates, hates, um, Yahweh Shai, they hate Yahweh too. And this same world that hates us, it hates Yahweh Shai and it hates Yahweh. And the thing that's hilarious about that is that Yahweh made them to hate him. You think Yahweh cares? He don't business that they hate him. He made them to be like that. He made people that was not going to like him. John chapter 17 and verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest keep that. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that I should just keep them from the evil. So we're going to be down here and we're going to see a whole bunch of madness if we're of the elect. We're going to see a whole bunch, you know? Therefore, don't wonder how much, how, what's going to happen to the people that are going to perish. But think about the people that are going to survive because every single way, every single type of evil that can happen is going to happen in the day of the Lord. And there's going to be at least one member of the elect that is a witness to see some of that evil and that escapes from something like that. And they're a witness to see something like that so that in the kingdom, they're going to get all the stories that you can put together of every single person that makes it from that elect. Right? It's going to be a hell of a tale to tell, man. It's going to be a hell of a tale. They're, they're all going to have their own individual story. But every single thing that's going to happen to every single member of the elect is all one combined story as well in itself what what can you say about something like that man how amazing is that to consider 
right? John chapter 17 and verse 15. Again, I prayed not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. So we're going to be down here and we're going to be somewhat catching hell, but we're going to be kept from the evil if we're of the elect, right? If we're of the elect, we're going to see all the madness. But at the same time, we're going to escape from it, man. And the evil that the people that want to want to try and betray us are going to put us through, we're going to have to experience that. But we're not going to perish from it, man. And and even even the thing that the prophecy that's mentioned in Revelation 20, right? Revelation 20 and um, 4, where it speaks about people that are going to be beheaded for not taking the Karag, man. That's prophecy. So if you actually go through that, it's not because you're a demon and you're wicked. That's actually because you're loved by your Howard. Right? All the things that you have a shy went through that I mentioned in Isaiah 53, that whole betrayal, that was to show that this is the only begotten son. And that only him, only he was going to go through that. Right? Nobody else. He was chosen and sanctified to go through that, man. Verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so also I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. And that's why when Yahweh Shai comes back, we're going to be cleansed and we're going to be changed. If we're of the elect. If we're of the elect, when Yahweh Shai comes back, man, we're going to be changed into some next level thing, man. You know like how people in this world... You what you want you see on the YouTube and that where people get their makeovers and that, right? And the guy might have had a rough, a rough like look, and then they give him a like Hollywood, so called Hollywood makeover, and that they cut his hair here, they give him the worldly hairstyles, they might trim his beard down, they give him some new clothes, right? Well, we're gonna get given new clothes, man. But our clothing is gonna begin with getting given a new body. A new body first. That no one else other than the Israelite is going to have access to. Right? We're going to get given the, the immortal bodies that Yahweh Shai is, that, that Yahweh has made Yahweh Shai make. Right? We're going to be given access to the incorruptible bodies that Yahweh has made Yahweh Shai make. Right? But every other nation on the earth is still only going to have access to the to the um to the mortal ones. So when Yahweh is making Israelites in it, when Yahweh is creating new spirits that are going to be given, that are going to be made to be Israelites in the kingdom, right? When he's going to be making them, it's going to be like this. I'm not saying this is exactly how it's going to go, but I'm saying, going to say it this way that I'm about to say it, so that you can understand the type of thing that's going to take place. So imagine it like this, man. When a, when a spirit's getting made and then the angels are there and whatever is going to be going on, they're like, okay, this is going to be an Israelite, okay, Get ready one of those immortal bodies then. Because this spirit is going to be going, he's going to be an Israelite. So this spirit, this new Israelite spirit that's going to be able to keep all the laws perfectly, is going to need to be put into one of these immortal bodies that are incorruptible. So make sure you put it in that. Okay. Next we're making a, a Moabite. Okay, give it one of them, um, give it one of them mortal bodies that's that's corruptible. Because the Israelites are the only ones that get access to these new bodies that we've made. That's what it's going to be like, man. Something of that kind of thought process so that you can consider what I'm saying. The Israelites are the only ones that are going to have access to the new clothing of being made incorruptible and immortal rather than corruptible and mortal. Verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So... That you've got the 144,000, right, that know the new song. But then you've got the people that are going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, but then you've got the people that are going to believe the new song. People that when they hear the song, they'll be like, man, I like the way that it's, this is being sung. Right? They're going to like to hear that new song, man. They're going to not scoff at it. They're not going to scoff. And that's why it's beautiful, man, when a person hears the Hebrew Israelite doctrine, and they don't scoff. They actually consider, you know what? I'm going to look and see if what's being said is true. They don't scoff and start bunning it out and saying, ah, oh, it's hateful. And start getting on TikTok and trying to get some likes by showing how much they hate the Hebrew Israelites. Right? And start scoffing up the scene like a clown. 
scoffing and mocking your own heritage. But then nobody don't scoff and mock any other kind of thing like that. Any other kind of thing that speaks up good for the so-called black man, Latino, Native American. You notice that most um most Jakes don't scoff it, man. Most Jakes didn't scoff Malcolm X. Most Jakes didn't scoff um Martin Luther King. They don't they don't scoff him most of them, no. You know what I mean? But when it comes to the Hebrew Israelite thing, all of a sudden everyone's got something to say, man. And all, there's so many videos out there of people scoffing you like, man, where 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 are all these videos being found, man? In the sewers of TikTok. In the online sewer. That's TikTok, man, where you can just find scoffers about everything, man. But then you can't find as many bunning out Esau, who's really kicked y'all ass. He, he, Esau really gave it to y'all, Jakes, man. Kicked y'all ass every kind of way that an ass can be kicked. And your main scoffing nowadays is against the Israelites. Sickening, disgusting behaviour from you people, man. Some of y'all Israelites, and I'm, I'm, and when I say Israelites, I'm using the term loosely because you people are Israelites, whether you believe it or not, whether you want to believe the doctrine and all these things, whether you want to even think that the Bible is valuable, you're still an Israelite. You can't say, oh, I used to be an Israelite. No, you, that's stupid. If you're an Israelite, you are, whether you like it or not. But not everyone of Israel is of Israel, as the scriptures say. So you're an Israelite in your nationality but you're not an Israelite in your actions, but the Israelite thing is not going to be passed on to any other nation because in every single generation that's ever existed, Yahweh's always had some Israelites that were acting like Israelites. So he had no need to try and pass it on to another nation. And that's why, now that I've said that, which this lesson wasn't even supposed to go this long, but it is what it is. But that's why when you consider this scripture here that I'm about to read, right? Yahweh is going to restart the Israelites with the remnant that's going to escape from all the destruction, man. So why would he need to make all the, any of these other nations be in with this? When haven't, haven't you people heard, like, I'm, I'm going to read this scripture, but I just wanted to say this, that haven't you people heard that Yahweh in times past actually did restart the whole world through four men and four women? So why would he need to, if he wanted to give something to the Israelites, right? And he's made prophecies to give things unto the Israelites. Why would he need to now make the Gentiles be Israelites, right? When he said in the scriptures, I can make stones Israelites. So why wouldn't he have just made the stones Israelites then instead of giving it through, through actual Gentile heathens that are not Israelites? What would be the need? Or why wouldn't he have, which he has done through, and he is going to do, I mean, through the Israelites that do believe, allow it to go and continue through them. When in times past, he's even said through, Mo you know what, Moses, I'm going to restart the Israelite thing pretty much through you. I'm going to destroy all the rest of these Israelites and I'm just going to do it started with you. Yahweh can do that. Just like how through Noah, he restarted the whole earth and brought back everyone. So you're trying to tell me that if he wants to restart the whole nation of Israel and restart fresh with the nation of Israel, he can't just use the remnant that do believe in him. Why would he need to give it unto the Gentiles? That's stupid. But you Christians don't consider these things. And if I asked one of these Christians something like this, you know what I'm going to hear? Crickets. Right? I'll be hearing crickets. I'll be hearing a pen. You'll yeah, be able to hear a needle drop on cotton. You know what I mean? You ain't going to hear nothing, man. Because they don't consider these things when they say these things. They've just ha got a doctrine that, and fake terminologies that they make, that they make up, that don't exist in the Bible, and they just run with it, man, because it's profitable to make money from it. Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 21, For thus saith yeah, the Lord Yahweh, how much more when I, when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast, yet behold, there shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters, behold, they shall come forth unto you and you shall see their ways and their doings because from this remnant, Yahweh is going to change them, right? He's going to turn them into the new type of Israelite, the new Jerusalem, right? 
he's going to make them be something completely different to what the world's ever seen before. And their ways and their doings are going to be how beautifully and how perfectly they can keep the laws that Yahweh gave that are, that are the manual of how to use the human body that leads to immortality. The schoolmaster that the Israelites was given to understand what righteousness looks like, right? So that when they saw Yahweh Shai, when he came on the earth, they could be like, this is him. This is the person that we've been waiting for that's going to deliver us from our sins so that even though we're keeping his law, that's the schoolmaster that we've been given, right? We are still corrupt because we still have to keep the day of atonement. But if we was really free from sin, we wouldn't have to keep these things. The schoolmaster, which was the law, was given to the Israelites because that's the way that they're ultimately going to live in the future perfectly. But it was given to them so that when they can look at these things and they see how we try to be like, this is the Messiah that I've been waiting for, man. This is him. He's doing all of these things that we were supposed to be doing. And he's doing them perfectly. This is the Messiah. All these laws that we're, we struggle to do them. When we look over and see him, he's doing them all. He's doing all these things. He ain't breaking none of it. That's what the law was given for. And obviously because it is something that's good. The Israelites are going to keep perfectly in the kingdom anyway. But it was don't, don't gave, given to them to show them what righteousness looks like, man. So that when they saw Yahweh Shai, they could say, okay, this is the Messiah, man. Look at him. He's doing these things. He's doing it. And he's going to allow us in the future to also do it. Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 22 again. Yet behold, there shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you and ye shall see their way and their doings. And ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem. Even concerning all that I've brought upon it, because we're going to be comforted, right, at the destruction that the two thirds are going to experience, man. All out of all the Israelites that exist in America, which is Babylon the Great, only one third of those, right, are not going to be destroyed by the lake of fire. Right? One third, two thirds are going to be burnt, man. Two thirds of Israelites which is a large portion of Israelites in Babylon the Great, man, are going to actually experience the lake of fire, man. And the, the amazing way how the Israelites are going to be changed and they're going to be different to the way how Israelites have ever been before, the destruction that those Israelites experience, they're going to be comforted by it. When they see what the Israelites actually, we end up being like, we're going to be like, okay, that, that heavy destruction happened to so many Israelites, both in Babylon the Great and around the world. But look at us, though, as a nation. And we'll see them other Israelites again anyway, eventually. They'll come back through the reincarnation again eventually. And they'll also get to experience this beautified state that we are living in now. And even the betrayal, we'll be comforted by the betrayal, man. We'll be like, okay. Because the scriptures even speak about that clearly in Romans, the 11th chapter, man, when you read it, starting from like verse 29, how... For the gospel's sake, certain Israelites are enemies of other Israelites. But ultimately, through our belief, they're going to receive mercy. Now, how, how can that happen if reincarnation doesn't exist? For all you Christians out there. Romans 11th chapter literally says, And so all Israel shall be saved. After giving the analogy of grafted in, grafted in, olive trees, wild and natural. It goes on and finishes off with all Israel shall be saved for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Yet for some reason, Christians will try and slide every nation into that ridiculous behavior. Like, they don't know. Like it's, it's really quite sickening how these Christians can get jets and all these things, man, to prophesy smooth things and prophesy deceits. Yet when you tell the truth, People make out like you're just the biggest demon on the earth. Like you're just running around with red horns on your head, man. Verse 23, and they shall comfort you. Ezekiel 14 and 23, and they shall comfort you when you see their ways and their doings. And you shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it. So if you have so we're going to understand if we're of the elect, whoever the elect are that are going to make it through the day of Yahweh's wrath, they're going to understand, man. 
all that destruction that Yahweh brought upon the Israelites was worth it, really. Because look at us as a nation now. Look at us. Like when we actually try and consider in our mind, I've tried to do it, and I'm sure other brothers out there have tried to do it. We've tried to consider in our mind what the new type of Israelite is going to look like, man. Because we've seen what Israelite men can look like when they are doing their thing, when they like go gym, right? When they put on the, put on the clothes and they have the fragrances on them and they have the clothes that's this, that are like more luxurious clothes. We've seen what they can look like, man. An example of that kind of thing is like the picture that exists out there with Michael Jackson in royal attire, man. He looks like a king in that picture. He looks extremely royal in that picture, man. When he's, when he's got that stuff and he's sitting on the throne and that, he looks very royal. It looks like a picture from a more ancient time, in fact, right? But what, what, what are we going to look like when we're actually changed, man? And that leads me to this scripture, and I think this will be a good place to end this lesson and after I read this scripture because we're not going to truly know what we're going to be, man, until we see Yahweh Shai. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, the sons of Yahweh, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Right? We've considered in our minds so many different ways. Oh man, I wonder, oh, we're gonna have we're gonna have such a low body fat percentage. We're gonna we're gonna be muscular without even training. Right? We're gonna like one thing I considered is that our skin is going to look like metal. Right? Our skin is going to look like metal when you look at when people look at it, man. You know, like how shiny metals look? That's what I thought in my That don't mean it's true. But even in this world, our Israelite skin can look like metal. When they go on a holiday, they get the healthy sun in them, right? They've got on the, on the um, healthiest things that you can put on your skin, right? They look, our skin looks like metal, you know? Our skin looks like, look, literally looks like what it mentions, Yahweh Shai's feet looking like brass. Burned in a furnace, man. It looks shiny, metally. You know what I mean? Metallic. So what are we going to be when we see Yahweh Shai? When we actually get that first glimpse of Yahweh Shai, there's not going to be a dry eye on earth, man. Yahweh has literally programmed Yahweh Shai's appearance and his countenance so that people cannot look him in his eye. And that's why when you see the um, description of Yahweh Shai, it's mentioned in the feet. John got a chance to have a glimpse at the countenance, but when he saw, he looked down. And that's what everyone on the earth is going to get to experience too, too, man. They're not going to be able to just be proud. It says, in the script, you know what, now I'm going to have to get this, man. I'm going to have to get this scripture as well. Yahweh is literally putting of all, like, all the best characteristics within Yahweh shape. Now, it says somewhere in here that when Yahweh, when you, Okay, here we go. Second Thessalonians chapter 13 and verse 3. And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen on him. So there's not going to be no one that's going to be able to hold Yahweh Shai's gaze and just look at him strong in the eye. Nah. There's certain animals in this world that people are not even brave to look in their eye, man. When people see gorillas in the jungle, they don't just look a gorilla in the eye. You know what I mean? They're shook. If see if people see a jung a, a lion in the jungle, they don't just look the lion in the eye. They get scared. There's certain animals that when you get told by certain of these people that are around these animals and they know how these animals behave, right? They tell you don't look them in their eye because they're gonna consider that a, um a challenge. Well, that's gonna be even more extreme for you, how shy. Because you, you think that Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is going to be scared of anything on the earth. Like, oh, he, 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 can, he, can, he can handle snakes, but he's scared of dogs. No. Everything's going to be scared, man. All things tremble that was seen under him. Everything, anything that Yahweh Shai looks at, he's going to be scared. And Yahweh has made it so. Yahweh's made it so that Anything that Yahweh Shai decides he wants to control on the earth, he's going to be able to control it all. And, in, in, and there's people that might have not heard this 
Some people know about the things that the type of things that I'm talking about. Some people understand why I'm saying it like that. But for you people out there that don't know yet, well, listen to this scripture. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. For our conversations in heaven, when also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashayak, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Now, you had that movie out there, Click, I believe it's called, with Adam Sandler, where he had a remote control that could control everything and stop time, rewind it, and all that. Well, to use this movie to help with my description on Yahweh Shai, right? Yahweh Shai has got a remote control built within him that allows him to control and subdue everything on earth under himself. So if there's an animal and he wants to control that, he can. If he wants to control the water, he can do that. He's done it before. If he wants to make water into wine, he can do it. If he wants to transfigure himself, he can do it. If he wants to control the wind, yep. He can do that. If he wants to make people not be able to see who he really is, he can do that. So we're going to be able to do that too. Who shall change our vile body, which is the body that we all have now, right? That's wicked as hell. That we need help and salvation from the Lord, which is the reason why when it begins at evening today, we're going to be keeping the Day of Atonement. If we wasn't keeping the Day of... If we, was, if we were righteous, we wouldn't need to keep the Day of Atonement. And I hope that that's going to cover and clear our sins. Which is ultimately the real fulfillment of that is the blood of Yahweh Shai. Right? We wouldn't be needing to be hoping for nothing like that. Because we got the vile body. But we're waiting on the glorious body. The immortal one. That's incorruptible. According to the work of everybody is able even to subdue all things unto himself. We're hoping, man. And the betrayal and all of these things that we're going to have to go through, the um, potential of our heads being in guillotines, well, we'll do it, man. We're going to hope that we're, Yahweh is going to put the spirit on us to be prepared to do those things. But that still don't mean that we're not supposed to consider and understand that the betrayal is going to come, though. All right? And on that note there, I think I will now end the lesson. All praises. To Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalawam to the Israel of Yahweh, right? The elect of the nation of Israel, Shalawam.